Hello cave dwellers, it's a sad day in the cave. The baking powder for fluffy muffins has run out. I've used this in pretty much every restoration since day one on the channel when I need a bit of help scrubbing with the cleaning. Without doing damage to the plastics, I chuck a bit of this on as you've seen. It says best before April 2016, so it was out of date before the first time I ever even used it for cleaning, but um, we finally run out. We need some more. Even Emergency Gary can't help me with this one. <laughs> I'm just getting set up for a tea break today. I am interviewing the legendary Richard Garriott. If I were to pick one interview of all time that I ever wanted to do, it's with this guy, the man behind the Ultima series of game games. He's been up into space in a rocket into the International Space Station. He's been to the bottom of the ocean to see the Titanic. He's just a legend in, in every way, and I can't wait to speak to him. As usual, I'm trying to prep without over-prepping to keep it a natural chat. I'm sure it'll be fine. A few pre-match nerves, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyway, looking in my inbox, you guys have been sending me loads and loads of videos of show and tells and of your cave. I wanted to squeeze them all into this week, but um, and, and to be able to sit down and um, comment on them all, give you my reaction to them all, but there's just too many. So what I've done today is I've made a montage of all of the outstanding ones. If yours isn't in there, ping me a message because there's next week as well. We can we can show some more next week, but hopefully this sort of puts a, a bow around all of the outstanding ones. And you can get to see a really nice mix of everything from DJ Slopes, fellow YouTubers, uh, show and tell, to uh, our good friend Pillock from Discord chat, showing us behind the scenes uh, his place. So here's the montage. I don't think there'll be an outro after it because there's a lot to get through. So just enjoy it. Enjoy your Fridays. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. And I'll see you all on Monday. Wish me luck with the interview. Take care. Bye bye. Good morning, cave dwellers. Hello, dwellers. It's the Pillock here. Hello, fellow cave dwellers. My name is Reese. Welcome to my cave. Hi, everyone. I'm doing a little bit of a show and tell today, a very quick one. DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room. Imagine if I talked like this in my videos. Wouldn't that be lovely instead of really growly and angry all the time? Yes. So this is my little man corner. Um, I work from home, but I also, um, I like taking things apart. I like, I like fixing things up. Um, I tend to have a, an ever-moving collection. And this is the 2.3 by 2.9 metre room where I make my YouTube videos and work on my projects. And this is my 90 second tour. Let's go. A Vampire Carbon Fibre A600. A Blue Vampire 1200. The Checkmate is actually a Vampire B4 standalone. It is the Sega Mega Drive, but with high definition graphics and sound. Amazing. I originally got one of these uh, for my birthday uh, when they were first launched. You did, the only packing game you got was um, Altered Beast, which I played for about 10 minutes. And then I played probably what was my favorite game on the Mega Drive, which is The Revenge of the Shinobi. And I thought what I would do is just show off some random stuff that Sega have sent me over the years. I'm not gonna show off things like my Mega Drive Mini, which I can see up there because everyone knows what that looks like. I'm looking at more the random other stuff. There's actually something I've just remembered, which is up here. One second. What I'm currently using by my retro computer of choice at the minute uh, is this Amiga 2000. Um, I'm upgrading a little bit. I'm trying to put some period upgrades in. Uh, so that's got a, a nice loud scuzzy hard drive. Apologies if you, if you can hear that on the video. Um, other parts of the collection, we've got uh, CD TV, we've got CD32, a couple of really nice bits of kit there. And it just kind of keeps going upwards and onwards, all in different states of repair. So first up, I have my RM window box 486DX4100, which is mainly used for playing Doom, hence the Doom Shrine I have there. The Atari Mega ST, which is my music making machine. Uh, that was the professional version of the Atari ST. There's the IBM 5150, which was the original DOS PC from 1981. My PVM there, which is currently hooked up to my Jaguar, and I uh, have the N64 there as well, that's the Japanese version. My original uh, Mark 1 Atari ST from 1985, that was before they had the internal floppy drive. The Commodore 64 is a new Commodore C64C case, but it's an old original bread bin inside with the original keyboard, with the IEC to SD, the good old ZX Spectrum Plus 2, with the ZX HD adapter for HDMI, and the Div MC for the bits and pieces for the games, but the tape still works, you can still do a load of quotes. and behind me is my three screen Mac Pro. Now unfortunately this is not my original one when I was a kid, 
Um, I traded that in for a, a Commodore Amiga A500 Plus. Um, yeah, so we got this. And then back in the early 2000s, got back into the retro bit, bought another one of these, another copy of this, and another copy of this. I say another copy. Uh, a childhood friend lent me their copy of this. I played it for a week or so. Absolutely fell in love with this game. And I can never remember Gyres or Gyres or how it's pronounced. All I can say is it's possibly the best or one of the best shoot 'em ups on the Mega Drive. So this does come with a bit of paper which is outside um, in my games room. So I haven't got that bit to show you. But basically this is a Sega Forever mixtape. Sega started releasing games um, for free with adverts, but if you paid like one pound, you get to play them without the adverts. They're all classic games. And this is an old mixtape, uh, literally on cassette. Yes, I have ever so slightly played it. Uh, and yeah, to sound this good takes ages. So you've got things like Space Harrier theme, Outrun, Magical Sound Shower, all that sort of thing. Oh, it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. Because I do so much repairing, I found quite useful to have things like the, the scope, got the, the desoldering gun that came really handy uh, because one of the machines up there is the 500 Plus Plus, the Rob Taylor project. So lots and lots of, of uh, desoldering took place on the donor boards. Uh, and something I treated to myself to quite recently, uh, always wanted the Mi 4000 ever since they were new. Uh, sadly, this one isn't quite in working condition, um, but it, it's getting there, it's not doing bad. And also, I tend to take in a few waifs and strays, so this is a 1200 that belongs to another dweller that's just having a few upgrades, getting a bit of a recap, um, and just trying to keep it in tip-top condition, so stuff tends to, to come and go. Uh, just some MSX stuff there, H uh, Sony HB101 MSX computer. Have my collection of Famicom games and accessories, the Nintendo Famicom being the original version of the NES of course. Have my uh, BBC Micro there. Then I have my shelves with my Atari collection, so I've got 5200, uh, the VCS Heavy Sixer there from 1977, a couple of original Pong machines, the 2800 which is the Japanese version of the 2600. Uh, just my Jaguar games, the Atari 800 there, the Touch Me handheld game from 1978, a boxed 7800 and an Atari XE game system. Uh, that is a original C Amiga 600, which was my uncle's. I have literally put in the scan doubler straight into there and took the model letter out, cleaned up the case as best I could, and that's the brand new A1200. .NET keycaps, so that's all done, and it's got the Kipper 2K ROM selector in there, so I've got everything from 1.3, 2.4, 3.1, 3.114, .1, all in there. It's a brand new A1200 case, brand new badge, brand new keycaps on my original keyboard from when I literally got it when I was younger. Then I've got my real time clock in there, I've got my SIF to adapter in there and as soon as the board comes back from getting the composite fixed we'll be all good to go. When I got back into retro scene early 2000s I bought these again, Mega Drive, I lost my job, I was out of work for 18 months and cash came tight so I met somebody on a McDonald's car park and sold my entire collection of Mega Drive stuff for £25. This game alone now cost me £25 recently to buy it and as you can see it's not in the best of conditions, no box, no instructions and the one I had was a boxed edition, uh, you're probably looking at about £80 to £100 on eBay now for that alone, so kicking myself. So over to the next person to show and tell, bye. I've got this, this Sega branded umbrella, yeah, and let me just open it up. Uh... One sec. Whoa! And it says, come on, zoom in. Rain over. Continue. <laughs> there you go. I have that. Oh, I've got something else random. This was to promote the Fire TV uh, games coming, the games coming to Fire TV stick. And it is literally a pair of, uh, here we go, Sega socks. I have never worn them. Nope. 
There you go, there's the other side. Sega branded socks, I've never worn them. Um, actually, I think I did try them on once. Obviously, one of the signs of a, a, a successful collection is it takes up more than one space in the house. Uh, so here I've, I've come upstairs to the, the storage area uh, where I've got a few goodies in here. So we've got uh, a Shrink Trap 600, uh, which is, is actually been uh, restored. It's on its way out to a lucky new owner. Under there, we've got a, a power tower and then the ubiquitous boxes of bits. So we've got uh, stacks of floppy disks, things that I've collected when I've collected old computers, uh, the power supply out the CD TV, various drives, uh, a nice uh, classic multi-sync monitor, um, and then the slightly sinister bit. Uh, some things unfortunately come in the house and never leave again. Uh, some things are probably not in a fit state to leave. Um, that's not one of the best examples you've ever seen, uh, but it, it'll provide some parts. It'll, it'll be useful for something. Um, and you'd be shocked to find out it's, it's not all Amigas, so there are other things in there, anyone that was into their laptops. In the, uh, in the 1990s, early 2000s, we'll probably recognise some Toshibas in there. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where it's hard to throw anything away. And finally, uh, just onto these back shelves, I have my Mr Driller collection there. Uh, some Dreamcast stuff, a processor card from a PDP-11 uh, mini computer, some boxed software for the PC and the Atari ST, and of course the uh, Acorn Electron and BBC, and my Auric Atmos, which is a genuine prop that was used on the IT crowd on Channel 4, and I won that in a charity auction a few years ago. So there we go, thanks for joining me for the tour, and I'll hopefully see you around. The re Amiga board by John Heddle, Chucky, and basically Hopefully once time allows, I'm going to have a white re Amiga board with a hopefully white TF1260 once it's finished, finalised, etc. And I'm going to put that into a see-through A1200 case with hopefully, if I can find one that runs on right power, the LEDs will flicker like a fire, so literally it would look like a terrible fire. And I've already ordered a new Bifrost, it's got Bifrost, I've ordered the second Bifrost to go in that one so I can make it even more fancy. And finally, what was the last thing I was going to show you? Ah oh, yes, these. These are what I, I like, one of the things I like the most, and it was to promote a game called Sega Heroes on their mobile, um, for mobile platforms. It's essentially a Street Fighter pocket adventure. Oh yeah, I've got this hat. There you go, look. Sonic the Hedgehog, I wanna say 20th anniversary. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got this hat. <laughs> and I got these boxes. That was the first box I got, and this is the next box I got. So basically, the idea is, um, inside these boxes are lots of pins of the characters that you have in the game it's like is it street fighter puzzle turbo or whatever that old game is um yeah it's just basically a fighting game but it's got like bejeweled underneath uh and these are the characters some of some of the characters in the game i'm missing a few because basically when they sent them out you, we, us influencers are supposed to uh, you know uh, uh swap and share until we get the set that we like which is kind of how the game plays uh, but no one wanted to swap everyone wanted their own like oh i want your streets of rage character but i don't want to give up knuckles you know <laughs> there you go that is my first set um is the second set um which they did on the second year on the anniversary oh, the, the one year anniversary um so i've got those four there but i was lucky enough to get a couple of extras so i think i'm probably the influencer of the most of these little pins <laughs> So we got uh, Altered Beast, they're gonna show up. Yeah, we got Altered Beast, um, Adam from Streets of Rage, Sonic the Hedgehog, and I wanna say Valkyrie Chronicles character as well. I don't know much about that series. But yeah, I have all of them. And look, here's a Sonic uh, Racing, again, for their Apple Play Store t-shirt as well. So there's some random cool things to show off. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get back to actually editing my videos now, but uh, Thank you very much for inviting me onto your second channel, Mr. Retro Man Cave. And uh, I hope you guys are all good. So this is DJ Soap signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Good morning, cave dwellers.